Hey, this is Rob from Producer Tech with our latest feature. Anyone who's had their head in the sand for the last few months may be unaware that Propellerhead have brought out a new feature for Reason called Rack Extensions, which are additional instruments and effects that you can purchase from their online store. This is a great new development, as it allows them to include products from other manufacturers in the software, and therefore makes Reason more comparable to the other DAWs on the market, which are compatible with external plugins. However, these devices have been made specifically for Reason, so, as with all the instruments and effects that come with it, the integration is very good. As you can see in the store here, there are already a fair few to choose from, and they're categorised into either instruments, studio effects, or creative effects. Also, you have the option of trying before you buy, with a 30-day trial period of full functionality, so you can have a play with all of them first, and then decide which ones you can't live without. I thought I'd start by giving you a rundown of some of the most popular ones, beginning with Korg's Poly6 Synth. Let's take a look. Poly6 is a software version of the classic hardware synth from the 80s. It's a pretty straightforward instrument, which, despite having a lot of controls here, has a fairly simple engine. There's just a single oscillator, filter, envelope and LFO. But there's quite a lot you can do with them. It comes with a nice little collection of factory presets, with 31 patches in the main bank, and then two more expansion banks, each with 29 additional sounds in. There's a good range in here, with plenty of full-on basses and leads, well suited to genres like Electro House, Trance and Breakbeat, but then also some gentler pads, keys and leads, which would work well in less noisy and subtler types of music. If I reset the instrument briefly to initialise the patch, I can take you through some of the features here. In the VCO or oscillator section then, you can generate either a sawtooth or pulse wave, so pretty rich waveforms. Then there's a third option of a pulse width modulated waveform, where the pulse width modulation amount and speed are set with the dials alongside. The switch at the end of the section allows you to add an additional sub-oscillator one or two octaves below. So if you want to beef up the bottom end, then you can do so. Then up in the top section, you can set the number of voices produced. The unison setting creates additional voices for every played note. So if I set it to six now, then we'll get six identical waveforms being generated when I play a note which is actually the maximum amount currently, but I can bring the total number up if I want to have more per note, or play chords. Having more voices makes the sound bigger, but also shapes the spectrum, as the identical waveforms interfere with each other. So, to fill out the sound again, and create some extra width, the voices can be detuned a little with respect to each other. And finally, the spread dial pans the voices so you get even more widening across the stereo field. The next section is the filter, which is a standard low pass, so can be used to filter out the high frequencies. And below this is the envelope generator, containing the standard ADSR controls, which shape the amplitude of the sound as default. So these can be adjusted if you want to turn the sound from a fully sustained one into a brief stab. However, you can see in the amplifier section that there's a switch for setting the sound to gate mode, which means the level is no longer controlled by the envelope and just sounds whenever you play a note, meaning the envelope is now free for using to modulate the filter cutoff which I do by first setting the amount and direction I want it to be modulated in with the EG intensity dial, and then using the envelope controls to create the desired filter sweep effect. The LFO is found in the modulation generator section here, 
and can be used to modulate the oscillator pitch up and down, or the filter frequency, or the level of the sound. Then, quite simply, you just turn it up with the level dial to increase the amount of effect it has. The speed is then set using the frequency dial, or the bass note option when synced, with an additional key switch for forcing the LFO to re-trigger when notes are played, which can be handy. One pretty cool thing here is the onboard arpeggiator, which is a first on a Reason synth, although Thor does have the onboard step sequencer for creating pretty complex patterns. Here though, you have similar timing controls to the LFO. So if I want to create a pretty fast synced pattern, then I can choose something like triplet semiquaver, and then set up the switches the way I want, maybe giving it a two octave range, and then keeping it on up down, which repeats the notes at the top and bottom or just having a straight up or down mode. Next to the arpeggiator are a couple of sections. One adjusts the pitch of the instrument, where you can set the pitch bend range, or transpose the sound up or down in semitones, or fractions of a semitone. And the other applies effects to the sound, such as chorus, phaser, and ensemble. These are modulation effects, which use an LFO to change one of the effects parameters over time. With chorus, it's the delay time of an additional voice. And with phaser, it's the phase. Chorus adds more width and character through the addition of this constantly shifting delayed signal and phaser creates more of a filtering style effect as the changing difference in phase causes certain frequencies to cancel out. The ensemble mode then creates an even larger sound with the addition of multiple delayed voices, which produce a distinctive sound that the old hardware unit was famous for. And lastly, the bottom section allows external modulation to be set up, meaning you can choose two different external parameters, such as note velocity or aftertouch, to modulate the level of certain parameters on the synth. Here, for example, I've set up the velocity to modulate the filter cutoff, so that louder notes also raise the cutoff higher to bring more high frequency harmonics back in. And on the other side, I've got the mod wheel controlling the level of the LFO, so I can bring its effect in and out by sliding the mod wheel up and down. So as you can see, Poly 6 is a pretty decent little addition to the Reason collection. And at €39, Euro, it's very reasonably priced. Next time, I'm going to be taking you through a couple of the effects including Audio Damage's Rough Rider Compressor. See you then.